my knowledge, the Sega Genesis wasn't really well known for its racing games. However, a game I remember playing at a friend's house, Road Rash 3, a simple point-to-point -point racing game involving about 15 racers, lots of fast crotch rockets, and weapons. Yep, your goal was to go from start to finish and finish in first, all while whacking your opponent's head in with chains, batons, and even a taser. First things first, the graphics are not the best to be seen on the Genesis. I'll give EA credit, they really tried to bring a 3D look to Genesis, but given the fact that there was no Mode 7 on the console, they were pretty much limited on what they could do. So here we are, playing a 3D racing game on the Genesis. Now, it's not too bad. There's random objects such as trees, signs, rocks, and buildings in the background. However, they're so sparse that each area looks like a wasteland. The obstacles are just simple sprites that get larger as you get closer, so they do get very pixelated, much like an early FPS game. The hit detection on these obstacles is pretty sketchy too. If you get too near them, even if there's an inch of space, you'll often collide with them. And sometimes if you hit them dead center, you'll just go straight through them. But in this case, collisions are your worst enemy. Basically, there's 14 other bikers looking for that gold trophy. The game is a bit lax on letting you cash up if you fall behind, but it's the same way with the AI. If you're in first, a simple error will cause the pack to come crashing down on you, like they've been riding your ass the entire time. Fortunately, the AI isn't terribly bright. They'll often swerve right at oncoming traffic while they're trying to set up an attack on you. And no matter how many times I see it, watching another biker crash into a deer as I ramp off of their bike, or even the body, is always amusing. You can't just keep crashing the bike though. It has its own damage meter. Basically, you have your own health and a bike's condition. Your own health will slowly regenerate, and if it drains, you'll just fall off your bike. It only drops if you get run over, which is really just a minuscule amount anyway but it mainly decreases when you're hit by other racers. However, the bike's condition won't magically heal up in the middle of a race. Instead, it gets repaired automatically after every race. If a bike's meter hits the end of the line, it explodes if you attempt to touch it. If you're close to the finish line, you can actually just run across it, as you don't need to be on your motorcycle to finish the race. This also saves you repair costs, as if a bike is destroyed, you have to pay to get it fixed, whereas normal damage after each race is repaired for free. You get money after each race, depending on how well you did. The money is mainly used for buying new parts, or even new bikes. I almost never bought the upgrade parts though. Instead, I just upgraded my bike to something faster. Later ones get extremely fast and include a few bursts of nitro, but near the 4th or 5th circuit, the bikes start getting too fast and it starts to feel like it's very difficult to control them. You'll probably notice yourself sliding out of turns or destroying your bike faster than the cheaper workhorses of the group. If you get caught by the police, you also have to pay the fines. So what happens if you destroy your bike or get arrested and you don't have enough money to pay the fees? You have one chance to redeem yourself. You'll have to take out another biker in the next race. Otherwise, it's a game over and you need to start over or input the password again. The person who gives you a chance to keep racing, it depends on how you went broke. If your bike was destroyed, a random racer will be chosen to offer you the deal. If you get arrested, the police officer will ask you to do them a favor and knock someone out so they can be arrested. It's a pretty interesting system. The races span five different circuits, and each circuit contains five tracks of varying countries. You have Brazil, Italy, Australia, the UK, Kenya, Japan, and Germany. In order to proceed to the next circuit, you need to place on the top three on each race to qualify. If you fail and get fourth or less, you can redo the race at any time. You still get paid though, which is pretty nice. It allows you to keep practicing on a race to get better, while at the same time increasing your funds. As you progress through the circuits, you'll find that the races are actually nearly identical to each other within the same country. For example, the Brazil race is the same in both the first and second circuits. However, as you progress along, the races will get longer. So basically, the first race in Italy might be 5 miles, and then the second one in the next circuit is 7 miles. They'll just keep adding more distance on until the final circuit, where the races are brutally long and require you to make control of your bike so you don't crash it, as you need to survive that much longer. One of the most interesting aspects about the game is the quotes that you get from the opponents. If you qualify in a race, some of them will comment in a positive, upbeat way, but most will tell you it was a fluke and won't happen again. If you lose, though, you usually get some funny taunt thrown your way. There's cutscenes that are pretty comical, too, especially on the races you lose. It's just a small detail, but it gives the game a humorous element. Now we move on to what I would consider to be the game's strongest element, the music. Yes, it sounds like Genesis music, especially when the bass or drums kick in. 
However, even with that, the music is just amazing for the game. It's a bit stereotypical, as the Kenya race features almost a tribal sound, and Japan has an oriental theme. But overall, it's just fantastic. My favorite is probably Italy's music. All of the songs have a hard rock feel to them, and they just fit the game. If this was done on the SNES, I couldn't imagine how freaking kick-ass it'd be. As you're jamming to the music, you do have to remember that there's other racers trying to smack you off of your bike repeatedly, so you do need to defend yourself in some way. There's a few attacks you're able to use. Without a weapon, you simply have a punch. Even with weapons, if you hold down an attack, you'll throw a low kick that attempts to kick the opponent's bike out, usually making them swerve uncontrollably. Well, at least, as uncontrollable as you can get when you can't swerve in a complete 360 degree turn. You can grab your enemy's weapons by simply punching as they attack. You rip the weapon from their hands and are able to use it against them. If you press, I think it was up and start, you can actually cycle through all your weapons. So you can switch to your fists and stockpile all of your weapons. However, after every race, your opponents get their stuff back. But don't worry, you still keep what you obtain. Oh, and do watch out for traffic. It can be the bane of your existence. Cars that come and rear-end you aren't too bad, but oftentimes vehicle in the opposing lane can come up suddenly, especially around turns and hills. Braking is difficult to do in this game, and I never understood why. If you do get forced from your bike, whether it be by accident or by a thug's club, you do have to run back to it. If you don't press anything, your racer will automatically run there. However, this can be a true pain in the ass if a car is dragging your bike along. They won't stop, and you just have to hope that the bike gets dislodged. So if you're in first place and something like this happens, it's very easy to drop back in the 15th place. Oh, and the other racers aren't the only guys on bikes you'll need to worry about. Cops will occasionally come along and attempt to arrest you. The ones on bikes aren't so bad, but the police cars will often swerve in your way. If you fall off and a cop is nearby, you'll be arrested and the race is immediately over. And if that's not bad enough, you'll occasionally see helicopters on later circuits. These bastards just die in front of you, attempting to knock you off by force. If you can manage to hit a ramp and land on top of a helicopter, it seems to defeat it as it usually just gives up the chase after that. Finally, the game also features a co-op play. Have a second player gear up and you race in a split screen variety of the main game. It's a cool feature, but the graphics take a huge hit on it. There's less scenery, and everything really starts to look bland. Even HUD is simplistic. Road Rash 3 is a pretty good racing game that's featured on the Genesis. I haven't really played the first two games, but eventually I might have to try them out, as I thoroughly enjoyed this one. It's really a shame on how difficult it gets near the end, because no matter how well I started to do, I usually ran into a car and lost the race because my bike, although it was the best one in the game, just couldn't take punishment. Overall, it's a good sprint style racing game. It's just a shame that it was never featured on the SNES, or any other consoles, as it may have been impressive to see what they did with it. Final score? 8 out of 10. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.